Welcome to Electro Online. Here's a good example why we need to use a definition when we're dealing with improper integrals. We're trying to integrate x e to the x dx from minus infinity to zero. So we want to do this. We want to first plug in the limit t and then evaluate it as we allow t to reach the limit of minus infinity. I'm going to show you why we need to do that. First, we'll solve the problem by ignoring that step and simply plugging in the limits directly and see what happens. And then you can see why we need to do it the correct way. So let's integrate this. Let's just ignore everything and just assume that we can integrate from minus infinity to zero the function x e to the x dx. And of course, to solve that, we have to integrate by parts. In other words, we're going to say that the integral of u dv is equal to uh, well, not minus, that comes later. It'll be u times v minus the integral of v du. So we just have to figure out what to call u and what to call dv. So let u equal x right here. That means dv can be written as e to the x dx. And then du will become dx and v will become e to the x. So now we can go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So the integral of u dv is equal to u times v. So u is x, v is e to the x. And we're going to evaluate that from minus infinity to zero minus the integral of v du. The integral of v du, that would be uh, e to the x times dx from minus infinity to zero. And so this becomes x e to the x evaluated from minus infinity to zero minus e to the x evaluated from minus infinity to zero. So we're now simply going to plug in those limits and see what happens. So plug in the upper limit, we get zero e times e to the zero minus when we plug in the lower limit and that would be minus infinity times e to the minus infinity minus e to the x when we plug in the upper limit, e to the zero, minus when we plug in the lower limit, e to the minus infinity. Now, let's see what happens when we add all that together. Well, e to the zero is one, but one times zero is zero, so this becomes zero. And here we have infinity divided by e to the infinity, because e to the minus infinity goes to the denominator, becomes e to the plus infinity, so we end up with infinity divided by infinity, and that is undefined. So minus undefined. Let's keep going. e to the 0, that's 1, so that would be minus 1. And e to the minus infinity is the same as 1 over e to infinity, which is 0, so it would be plus 0. So the answer is 0 minus undefined minus 1 plus 0. Can't solve it because we don't know what this is equal to. So therefore, instead, what we should have done is we should have done the integral, but then taken the limit as t goes to infinity. So instead of plugging in negative infinity, we're going to plug in the lower limit of t. In other words, we have the same result as we have here. So this becomes equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of x e to the x evaluator from t to zero minus, and when we do this integral, we get e to the x evaluated from t to zero. So we're going to plug in zeros, we're going to plug in t's, and then let t go to, oh, not infinity, but negative infinity. All right, let's go ahead and do it that way. This is equal to the limit as t approaches negative infinity of, plug in the upper limit, we get the same as before, zero times e to the zero minus when plug in the lower limit, which would be t e to the t. Then we have minus, when plug in the upper limit, e to the zero, and then minus when plug in the lower limit, e to the t. All right, just as before, we're okay with evaluating this, because this will be zero. We're okay with evaluating this, because that's a one. And we are okay with evaluating this because this will be zero as well when we plug in the limit of minus infinity. But here we have a problem. So to evaluate this portion, we're going to take use Lohapital's rule for that. 
So we'll show you in just a moment how to do that. But so this would be equal to 0. This here would be equal to 1. And this here would be equal to 0. So we end up with negative 1 so far, but we need to know what this is equal to. So we're going to take the limit as t approaches infinity of this. However, using Le Hapital's rule, we can go ahead and take the derivative of this. Well, first what we're going to do is we're going to move this to the denominator and write this as t divided by e to the negative t. Or actually, no, I don't need, yeah, I can do that. That's fine. So now I have it in terms of a fraction in order to apply Le Hapital's rule. I'll keep the negative separate. So now when we integrate this, or when we differentiate this, this is now going to be equal to the limit as t approaches negative infinity. I keep forgetting to put the negative sign down there, so there's the negative infinity. And so when we take the derivative of the numerator, we get 1. We take the derivative of the denominator, we get minus e to the minus t. Now we're ready to find the limit of that. Now we can let t go to negative infinity and see what we get. This is equal to 1 divided by negative e to the negative negative infinity. So here you can see that negative times the negative infinity is a positive infinity. 1 over e to infinity is equal to 0. Which means this term here will go to 0 as well if we apply the limit technique to it like this and we use Le Hapital's rule to get it into a form that we can actually evaluate at t approaching the limit. So now this, instead of being undefined, now becomes 0, and so then we say that this equals negative 1, and let's see if that's correct. Yeah, negative times a positive 1, so that's negative 1, and that is the evaluation of that particular interval, doing it the proper way rather than just plug in the limits directly, and then you run into trouble when you end up with an undefined statement, and that's how it's done.